If you're a great machinist in this trade, then you know that roughing is where you make your money. But if you can't come in and make a perfect surface finish and hit all of your tolerances, then before you know it, you're gonna be out of business or out of a job. So today, I'm gonna show you guys some super sick tricks on how to make a beautiful part and hit those tolerances, hit those surface finishes, and advance yourself in your career in this trip. Yeah. So if we take a look at all this geometry, we got some crazy stuff going on. How are we gonna finish this? We can't swarf mill it. We can't use a keyway cutter because we don't have enough clearance between here. Then, what's the perfect tilt angle to have our tool at to get the best surface finish? to try to approach this part using three plus two moves we would have to have a whole lot of different planes and a whole lot of different tool paths you can see that the snail surface goes down underneath it comes up above and we have to avoid our fins we have to avoid our flange face and we have to avoid our top face here now the goal is to get all of this surface finished in one operation so we're going to use unified guide now you can see that this tool path is capturing almost this entire section of the snail Within this toolpath, what we have is we have a guide. You'll see it's the outline of all the surfaces that I'm telling my toolpath to machine. Now on a part like this, this is why our tool axis vectors are so important. Because if I just tell it to stay perpendicular to this surface, as we come around the top, our tool is going to hit this top flange of the part. And we don't want that. So we're going to make sure that we put specific vectors in for our tool axis to follow. what we've done is we've gone in and we've created a bunch of different vectors that are going to tell our toolpath how we want our spindle oriented in relationship to the part. So you can look here and see all of these lines that I've drawn in manually and I'm telling my spindle to orient itself that way or as close to that as possible while machining that surface. So you can see for each of my unified toolpaths, I have vectors drawn in for each of those groups of surfaces. Now until we hit a 15 degree tilt to our surface, only two flutes of our ball end mill are going to be engaged in the cut. Now ideally, we'd have a tilt greater than 22 degrees because that's the point where all six flutes begin to enter the cut. Now if possible, we would want a 45 degree tilt to that surface, but with this part, that's not going to be possible. So, because we're taking our tilt into account, we're going to pretend like this end mill only has two cutting edges. So if you take a look at how our spindle orientation is reacting to these vectors, you can see that at different points along that surface, my head is actually tilting to try to follow those vectors as close as possible. With synchronous five axis milling, you're usually not gonna get as good of a surface finish as you would with three plus two. And that's because with the two additional axes moving, you're gonna have less rigidity. But thanks to our Siemens control, we're using cycle 832 smoothing settings and we have it set to finishing with a tolerance of five tenths and an angular tolerance of one degree. Yes, Siemens. Out of all the cam softwares that I've used, Mastercam for me has been the absolute best with five axis milling. Now the thing that I love about the unified toolpath in Mastercam is that it can basically do all of the same things that any other five axis toolpath has in it. So everything that's underneath the blue toolpath here is my machining geometries, and everything that you see here that's in red is what I'm using for collision control. Now at first glance, a part like this might look pretty complicated and pretty difficult to program. But when you have the right cam solution, it actually is pretty simple.
Now, if you guys are looking at this part and you're wondering, why is this relevant to me? I'm only running a three axis machine right now. If you go back and watch the video we just did of our Blue Origin tour, you'll see a part that looks almost identical to this. So you can actually see this pump housing right here. So this is a, this hasn't been machined yet. So when you actually look at this part, you can actually look at the project, the series that we've been doing on the Heller. And you can see they already started cleaning this one up, cleaning around the mandrel, super good. So by learning some of these methods right now, you might be able to use this at a future job at a place like Blue Origin. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget the tips that we taught you today, the importance of the 15, 22, and 45 degree tilt rule, and the importance of vectors. Stay tuned for our next video and find out how we're gonna put this gigantic piece of steel on the that little pallet. Oh yes, ductile iron chips of greatness. Ah!